Hello everyone. Uh, before we get to our main topic today, I want to talk very briefly about marathon running. So way back in 1985, science journal Nature published an article predicting that by the year 2000, women would be consistently running faster marathon times than men. Now, what led them to make this prediction? Well, it was the data they had. They saw that men's marathon times had hit a plateau, and the record time was increasing only very slowly and by very small amounts. The women's record time, on the other hand, was increasing much faster. So by extrapolating out the very slow growth of the men's record time and the relatively fast growth of the women's record time, they predicted that women would catch up to and pass men within a decade or two. Now then, they made a mistake, didn't they? Uh, one which got them not a small amount of impolite mocking. Um, and what was that? Well, by just extrapolating the current data trends into the future, you'd fairly quickly have women running the marathon faster than the speed of sound, which is probably highly unlikely. Uh, where nature went wrong was not considering any other factors which might have an effect on those data trends in the future, for example, women hitting the same plateau as the men did, which is, of course, what happened, you know. Women's times had been increasing quickly because not as many women were participating as men. Women's sports science wasn't as advanced as men's, but as women caught up to the men's times, those trends changed, obviously. So why am I talking about this blunder by a science journal in 1985? Well, I just want to highlight the danger of projecting current short-term data trends decades into the future. For example, will birth rates among poorer immigrant populations remain the same several generations down the line? It's something to think about and keep in mind. Uh, so then, what's the actual topic of my video today? Well, it's a recent video uploaded by Lauren Southern called The Great Replacement, and let's watch the introduction to that. Hey everyone! Okay, so today we are going to be talking about a very serious subject. Something that I think a lot of people are too afraid to talk about because they're worried about being called a bigot by both the people on the left and the right, surprisingly. So in order to avoid people trying to discredit this video with name-calling of Nazi or propagandists or other such nonsense, it's going to be a very data-based video for the first bit. Yay, data analysis. That's me. Uh, I have a little alarm that goes off when someone says data on YouTube. Uh, so that intro there had a few of the regular white nationalist rhetorical tricks you see online. Uh, lots of people agree with us. They're all just too afraid to talk about it. You see, they don't want to be called racist. They're scared. But, but we're going to talk about it because we're brave, aren't we? Us talking about it. Yeah, silly. Uh, Lauren also tries to avoid accusations of racist and Nazi by saying, this is a data-based video. I'm going to be talking about statistics. Statistics can't be racist, you know, they're just a bunch of numbers. So by the rhetorical framework I just imposed here, I literally can't be a racist. And, well, we'll see about that. Uh, so anyway, what is the topic of Lauren's video? So bear with me, because the thing I want to talk about today is the Great Replacement. The Great Replacement is a term coined by French writer Renaud Camus referring to what he views as the irreversible overthrow of France and its culture by Muslim immigrants from the Middle East and North Africa. The Great Replacement is a very simple concept. You have one people, and in the space of a single generation, you have a different people. Despite various misrepresentations, Camus does not oppose current immigration policy out of racism or Islamophobia, but on the basis of the preservation of French traditions and culture. And though Camus has had his eyes set specifically on France, his concerns have been shared by many nationalist and identitarian movements all across Europe. But the real question that comes in now is, is there any evidence that a great replacement is actually occurring? Or is Camus just another instance of paranoid white panic? Is he just another racist xenophobe who deserves to be convicted of a hate crime in order to pay a 4,000 euro fine? Yeah, that actually happens in Europe. Uh, I'll stop you there, Lauren, first off. Uh, this says, in connection with two separate bar clashes in Paris with people who accused him of hate crimes, and then he didn't even appear in court for the verdict. And apparently he was shouting, I love Hitler, people like you would be dead, your mothers, your forefathers would all be fucking gassed at people. So, good. Fuck that guy. 
Anyway, let's talk about The Great Replacement, which means white genocide, by the way. It's the exact same concept. It's just been given a makeover to try and sell it to more people. White genocide is a conspiracy theory that says white people are dying out due to a combination of race mixing and white people having children at a slower rate than non-white people. You know, as if it's a competition. Uh, now, not only is this not true, uh, there are more white people alive today than at any point in history, uh, it's also not genocide. You know, even if it was happening, it's not deliberate. It'd just be a demographic change over time. That's not genocide. No white people are getting killed because of this. You know, that's white privilege for you, I guess. We even get the nice version of genocide. Of course, the sorts of people who believe this rubbish will tell you it is deliberate because it's supposedly the Jews doing it, which, you know, they think because they're racist morons. But people like Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux and others who peddle this replacement rubbish, well, they aren't allowed to say it's the Jews doing it, because then they'd lose their platforms for being openly racist. So, because they can't openly blame it on the Jews, I can say it's not deliberate, and therefore not genocide, and they're not allowed to retort, which is awfully fun. It's a bit like cheating, you know, they know they're being anti-Semitic, and I know they're being anti-Semitic, but only I get to say it. Anyway, so replacement is the PC term these people have come up with to stand in for white genocide. And it's a silly term, and I'll give you an example. Uh, here's a picture of a giraffe, say. Uh, and now I'm going to replace that picture of a giraffe with a picture of a dog. Uh, do you see what happened there? I replaced one thing with another thing. That's what replacement means. Uh, now let's try it another way. Here's the picture of the giraffe, and now here's the dog. And would you look at that? We've got both. They're both still there. Nothing's been replaced, you know. They both just are there now. Do you follow? Uh, anyway, let's get into Lauren's data. But despite all of these roadblocks, the stats that we do have access to paint a pretty clear picture. In 1993, 7% of the UK population was foreign-born, and 3.6% were foreign nationals. With the 2004 European Union enlargement and drastic shifts in immigration policy, those numbers rose to 13.5% and 8.9% in 2015. These populations are primarily of Indian, Pakistani, or African background. Uh-oh, that was a lie. Sorry, Lauren. Uh, so the stats that were just showed there come from the Migration Observatory, from the University of Oxford. And Lauren cites two sources from the Migration Observatory. Let's take a look at those. Uh, the first is long-term international migration flows to and from the UK. And for a start, this one says, The share of EU citizens in LTIM inflows and net flows has increased. The share of EU citizens among incoming migrants has been steadily increasing since 2004, when it stood at 22%, and is much higher than the average for the 2000-2003 period when it stood at about 13%. By contrast, the share of immigrants from outside the EU has declined from 63% of all incoming migrants in 2004 to 45% in 2016. So according to this study, migrants from outside the EU account for less than half of the total incoming migrants. Now, I know you're Canadian, Lauren, maybe you don't know that much about Europe, so a little geography lesson for you. India, Pakistan, and Africa aren't in Europe. It's not even close. And if we take a look at the other migration observatory source, Migrants in the UK, an overview, that one actually lists the countries that migrants into the UK come from. And the number one spot is Poland. Poland tops the tables for both country of birth and country of citizenship among migrants in the UK. And take a look at these countries. The vast majority of countries on this list are within Europe. These are mainly European migrants coming into the UK. These populations are primarily of Indian, Pakistani, or African background is just a flat-out lie. Why is Lauren ignoring the Polish immigrants, for instance? I wonder why that could possibly be. Well, it's because they're white. Obviously, you see, this thumbnail with all the little black figures outnumbering the little white figures, that wouldn't make any sense if she was like, oh yeah, by the way, most of these immigrants are just Europeans moving around the EU, and those Europeans are generally white themselves. 
You know, it's harder to scaremonger for a racist audience if you actually tell the truth. But let's carry on and take a look at this headline. Uh, Migrants change UK forever, white Britons will be minority by 2066. Let's talk about this. So first off, this headline doesn't mean that white people will be a minority in the UK. It means that self-identified white Britons will be not necessarily a minority, but not the overall statistical majority. And what's the difference there? Well, if 49% of the country identify as white British, they'll still be the largest group unless every single other person in the country identifies as the same thing. In actuality, what you would have would be 49% white British, and then a certain percentage for Asian British, a certain percentage for black British, a certain percentage for white Irish. You know, from the news report, in the study, minorities are classed as people who also describe themselves in censuses as Irish or another nationality. So a certain percentage for white Polish people, I guess, if we're acknowledging that they exist and aren't actually from Pakistan. Anyway, the largest group would still be white British. I mean, they're not going anywhere. They'll still exist. It's just that cumulatively, all the people who self-identify as something other than that added together would be the slight majority in 50 years' time. And it doesn't sound so scary when you put it like that, does it? And this is all assuming that the current data trends can be projected 50 years into the future while staying the same. And it might be worthwhile looking at who compiled this data. Uh, From the Express, it was Professor David Coleman. Now, who is Professor David Coleman? Well, he is the founder of Migration Watch UK. Hello, Migration Watch UK. It's nice to see you again so soon. Uh, And he's also a member of the Galton Institute, uh, formerly known as the Eugenics Society. And there's no prizes for guessing why they had to change the name. It's actually quite funny how little effort you have to put in to get past Lauren's gossamer thin, politically correct veil and see all the weird Nazi shit behind her positions. Uh, The first source on her list in her video description is The Great Replacement Part 2, Great Britain, from Defend Europa, written by a chap called William, who handily links his Twitter account at RealWilliam. And let's see some of the things he has to say. I'm still waiting. Nobody can present me with conclusive evidence that gas chambers even existed, let alone that six million were gassed. Am I a racist? If racist means against other races who wish to harm my race, then yes, guilty as charged. Capitalism and Bolshevism are two sides of the same international Jewish coin. Adolf Hitler. So... (laughs) Good first source there, Lauren, a self-identified, Hitler-quoting, anti-Semitic, Holocaust-denying racist. I'm sure he's got an unbiased opinion about immigrants. You know, I can't be racist, I'm just quoting statistics. Oh, by the way, my first source is a fucking Nazi. And let's have a look at some of the top comments on Lauren's video, which I screencapped before they started getting deleted. Uh, 1488. It's a good start there, very subtle. Uh, Here's some truth. Jews were and are to blame for the Great Replacement. And then a bunch of other crap. Uh, The Great Replacement is a Jew-orchestrated plan of white genocide. This is happening because of Jews. The Jews hate us. Zionist Jew degeneracy. Etc. And it goes on. Quite the elephant in the room we have here. This is the problem that people like Lauren are gonna run into again and again. Their viewer base is just too clueless to play ball. And it's difficult to sanitize white nationalism when you have a bunch of dudes in white hoods behind you ranting about the Jewish question. You know, we're all onto this game by now, Lauren. You're not fooling anyone. Anyway, let's carry on and have a bit of a think about Germany. So Lauren has a few sources about Germany in her video description there. Uh, This from Information Liberation. Nearly 40% of Germany's under fives are foreigners. Now, that's not true. Uh, If they were born in Germany, they're German citizens. They're not foreigners. Uh, What you mean to say, and what you're actually outraged about, is that those people might not be white. I also like this picture here, which has a bunch of smiling children waving the German flag, and this is supposed to be a bad thing somehow. Uh, There's also this story from the Daily Mail. Germans now the minority in Frankfurt. More than half of residents in the city have a migrant background. And the top comment on this article is pretty funny. Uh, Migrant background? 
That could still mean they were born and raised in Germany, speak German as their first language, and are German citizens with no other allegiance. Very misleading headline. That comment is from Tommy there, not Robinson, I assume. As a side note here, this article manages to spell the word integrate three different ways in just two sentences, which is impressive, to say the least. Uh, anyway, yes, Tommy's right. Uh, people of a migrant background doesn't mean migrants. It means people of a migrant background, which, depending on where you want to mark the cutoff point in history, that could include any number of people. Also, again, not that it matters, but like in the UK, the majority of these migrants are from other European countries. Quoting the article, Turkish migrants are the largest non-German minority that are settled in Frankfurt, accounting for 13% of the population. A further 61% of residents who were born abroad have come from other countries within the European Union. Lauren, again, doesn't mention this because she's trying to mislead their audience about the race of the migrants. You know, if the majority of them are other Europeans, it ruins the white nationalist narrative. There's another point here about the duration these migrants plan to stay, because of course, not all migrants are permanent migrants. And looking again at Lauren's Migration Observatory source, the share of immigrants planning to stay for shorter periods of one to two years has increased since the 1990s, with less than a third of incoming migrants planning to stay for a period of more than four years. Lauren doesn't mention this and treats all migrants as though they are permanent migrants, when the statistics just don't support this. Anyway, let's move on and take a look at Lauren's main source, which is this chap, Renaud Camus. I'm saying that wrong. And let's have a little read of a WordPress blog post written about Camus and his replacement theory. Uh, that I found in Lauren's sources, by the way. Firstly, there is no racial replacement in Europe as the immigrants are not numerous enough to change the colour of the locals. Secondly, if there is a cultural drift, is that drift due to immigration or perhaps to globalisation, i.e. fashions and behaviours from around the world coming to our doorstep via the internet? His views lead him to make two astonishing statements. Firstly, he takes Israel as a positive example that Europe should be well advised to imitate by remigrating foreigners back to their country of origin. This is funny when one knows that Mr Camus' supporters are in fact anti-Zionists, as anti-Semitism is now called among the thinking elite. Secondly, he argues that Europeans should contribute significantly more to the economic support and development in the third world, and in particular Africa, basically paying them to stay home, rather than having them come and eat our food. No one of a serious mind would give support to Renaud Camus for these odd views. Well... And again, I didn't go looking for that source, this is listed in the description of Lauren's video, you can go and check. Uh, so anyway, I have a pro video making tip for you Lauren, uh, maybe don't include links to articles that imply your main source is an irrational idiot? I mean, what happened there? Were there not enough positive articles about the guy so you had to include ones that dunk on him for being a moron? I don't know. So anyway, that WordPress blog was right. Camus' plan to deal with the migrants is to re-migrate them, i.e. ship them all back home. Uh, in an article on Free West Media, Camus says, The means and ends are one and the same. Re-migration. The return of the conquering peoples to their own lands. Conquering peoples. So, okay, very sorry to everyone in the US and Canada, but you're going to have to move back to Europe which is a bit concerning, to be perfectly honest, I don't know where we're going to put you all. Uh, of course, Camus probably doesn't mean this. The arbitrary line he's drawn in history for when we need to stop migration and ship everyone back is probably not going to have to include any white people being shipped anywhere. It's funny how that works, isn't it? Also, Camus' plan wouldn't work. Uh, quite aside from the fact that it is literally impossible to just ship every descendant of a migrant back to where they came from, his measures don't go far enough to stop what he wants to stop. Let's consider the world as a whole. You know, there's no migration to the world, is the that we know about anyway. Uh, and now let's imagine that all birth rates were equal across every group and type of person. So exactly equal birth rates for everyone. And let's say that they're exactly at replacement levels everywhere, so every country and race has a completely stable population. Now then, what you would still see is the white population declining as a percentage of the whole over time. And why is that? Well, it's because of how we classify whiteness. 
Barack Obama, for instance, is seen as a black man, despite having one black and one white parent. Do you see my point here, any racist folk who are watching? Immigration and birth rates don't matter. Because of how we classify races, to maintain the white population as the same percentage of the whole, you would have to either ban interracial relationships, or introduce measures to reduce the birth rates of non-white people. That is the only logical endpoint of what you're proposing. And I imagine someone might say, wait, but I'm not talking about race, I'm talking about culture and heritage. Yeah, rubbish. Uh, but admittedly, there is one aspect to this that isn't racial. Uh, there is also a religious element to consider. Trends in Europe tell the same overall story. As the native European population dies out, migrant and Muslim populations are rapidly growing with higher birth rates and unfettered mass immigration. And with the median age of 32 for Muslims in Europe, eight years younger than for all Europeans, five years younger for the religiously unaffiliated, and 10 years younger for the European Christians, the future of Europe looks pretty halal. Now, sorry, Lauren, again, that's not true. Uh, for a start, Camus states, the great replacement is very simple. You have one people, and in the space of a generation, you have a different people. The space of one generation. So, how fast is the Muslim population in Europe actually growing? Uh, well, according to another link in Lawrence's description, uh, by 2050, the population of Europe that is Muslim will be 10%. 10%. So, in 2050, I will be, for example, 62 years old. So when exactly am I supposed to be replaced? You know, you're telling me that if we don't act now, then in 33 years, assuming current data trends hold, remember, we'll still outnumber Muslims 9 to 1. You know, excuse me if I don't throw myself out the window in panic here, Lauren. The future of Europe looks pretty halal actually means that in several decades, they will just about be 10% of the population. And I can extrapolate data trends into the future too, as it turns out. Uh, the Muslim population of Europe as a percentage of the whole has been increasing by about 1% per decade. So for a clear majority, after they hit 10% in 2050, we'll just have to wait for around 40 decades, uh, which is 400 years. So. Act now, people of Europe, or in the year 2500, we're really going to be in trouble. We'll have hover mosques or something. Muslims flying around in little Jetsons cars. <laughs> anyway. So, let's talk about how this happened. One of the biggest things that we can attribute to the cause of the Great Replacement is Western ethno-masochism. Basically, White people hate themselves, and if you look at groups like Antifa, or even just your average college student or state broadcasters, many white people feel that replacing themselves will relieve guilt of past crimes. So unlike almost every other culture in the world that wants to preserve itself and remain homogenous, Europeans actively invite the destruction of their tradition. So, Lauren says this is happening because white people hate themselves, and actively want their countries to be destroyed. And it's a clever framing of the argument there. You know, this bad thing is definitely happening, and everyone agrees it is, but some people just want it to happen, you know. Well, speaking as a white man here, Lauren, I don't hate white people, and I don't want my country to be destroyed, but I still disagree with you because I think you're wrong. You've tied culture and national identity to race, and that's bullshit. You don't have to be white to be a British person, or an American person, or a German person, and so on. Insisting that the racial makeups of these countries is something to be concerned about is just incorrect, conspiracy theory, racist nonsense. Consider this. In the last century, which of the following actually nearly destroyed Europe? Was it immigrants? And people who aren't white? Or was it what Lauren would call a national identitarian movement concerned about minorities changing the culture of their country? Answers on a postcard, thanks. And I'd like to address something else. Uh, Lauren thinks that immigration and cultural change represent the death of tradition. I disagree. I think it is our tradition. It's one of the traditions that's worth preserving. 
when I think about great things my country has done, the first thing that comes to mind is oppose the Nazis. And we didn't do that alone. Like, the RAF, for instance, fighting the Battle of Britain, had refugee pilots from all over Europe fighting in it. And we also have a history of taking in migrants, sometimes huge amounts of migrants. Uh, let me talk about my own city for a little bit. While the Irish potato famine was going on, about a million Irish people emigrated out of Ireland in a relatively very short period of time. And Liverpool, being a port city close to Ireland, is where a lot of those people ended up. Uh, by 1851, about a quarter of Liverpool's population was Irish-born. And that's born in Ireland, not descended from Irish people or whatever. And I'm sure if we had YouTube back then, we'd have people proclaiming the doom of the country. You know, all these Irish people will breed like rabbits. They're all poor. They're a drain on the state. They don't have jobs. They're going to outbreed us and take over. Which, you know, it didn't happen, did it? And now, someone might say, well, Irish people aren't like today's immigrants. They were able to integrate. Sorry, integrate. They integrated just fine. No troubles there. Hey, troubles. Do you get it? You know, it's not like there'd ever be any Irish terrorists, would there? It's not like Irish terrorists would set off the most powerful bomb detonated in Great Britain since World War II, is it? It's not like any Irish people would ever launch a mortar attack on Downing Street in order to assassinate the Prime Minister, is it? Um, that's all true, by the way. Uh, and now, a few decades later, nobody really cares, you know? Nobody is fretting about Irish birth rates. No one's crossing the road or getting off a bus when they hear an Irish accent, are they? Not many people in Britain are all that fussed anymore. And I wonder why that is. Not really. Again, it's because they're white. But what's my point here, really? Well, Lauren, with regards to the whole white genocide thing, just don't worry about it, you know. Demographic change is inevitable. It will happen regardless of what you do. It's not a matter of fighting it or not. It can't be fought, it's just what happens. It's what's always happened, and it's nothing to worry about. And it won't be as bad as you think, anyway. Uh, by the way, it won't be bad at all, of course, in any regard, but I'm trying to speak her language here. You see, birth rates are falling everywhere. With medical advancements, less people needed for farming, you know, more people living in cities, a greater chance of kids living to see adulthood and so on, fewer children are being born, but this is happening globally. I've mentioned this in another video, but birth rates in predominantly Muslim countries are also falling. Recent migrant populations might have more kids than the average in the country they've moved to, but that's a mix of being generally poorer than the native population, which resolves itself within a few generations, and cultural norms, which also even out after a couple of generations, by and large. You know, anyone looking into the future and trying to predict what different birth rates will be like in 2070 or something, well, it's a fool's errand. We don't know. And I'd like to leave you all with a brief thought about the white fear of becoming a minority. And I'll say this to any fellow worried white people. Uh, you are already a minority. You're a minority in lots of ways, many of which might seem trivial to you right now. But what happens when a Nazi-like party comes to power and starts again judging people by nose length or eye colour or skull shape? You know, don't start hating on minorities in order to prevent becoming one, because you already are. So, just get used to it, I guess. And chill out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, this Rome video is never gonna come out, is it? Sorry, my fault. I keep getting distracted. I should just completely log off the internet until it's done now. Uh, thanks, as always, to my supporters over on Patreon, who almost literally put food in my mouth. I love them all and I hope they all get exactly what they want for their birthdays. And if you would like to be similarly complimented, consider supporting me yourself. It's positively exciting. Also follow me on Twitter if you feel like. Righty-ho, folks. I'll see you soon.